What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, hunters of all ages, Joker back again, once again. And today, today I bring you a game that will forever change the gaming landscape. For they have the audacity to ship a game ripe for loot box exploitation without loot boxes. In a day and age where these predatory gambling microtransactions are everywhere. When developers say that games just don't make enough money without manipulating the easily addicted nature of the human psyche. One game stands to rise above them all and say, You shall not pass! I, of course, am talking about the game that was promised. The one that would rise up and save us from the long night and banish the great evil of microtransactions. I, of course, am talking about the one the only Monster Hunter World! <laughs> Joker? Yes, Joker? What... <sighs> what did I tell you about all this hype bullshit? I don't know. What... Did you tell me about all this hype bullshit, you cranky old bastard? Cranky old, that, we're, <sighs> we're the same person, you know, just from different timelines and parallel dimen- You know what, y never mind. I'm assuming direct control of this video. We don't need this hype train bullshit around here. We look at the facts, we look at the data available, and we determine if a game is worthy of our time, our money, and our viewers' time and money. I mean, come on, you really don't want to start sounding like that other guy, do you? Everybody who thinks Destiny 2 should have been good out of the gate, well, I don't give a flying fuck what your opinion is. I'm having an amazing time playing Destiny 2, and it will get better from paid DLC to paid DLC. You're just too ignorant to understand. Huh. You may have a point. Anyways, I thought all we did was just bitch about Destiny 2 for that sweet, sweet ad revenue. You mean the whole 20 bucks I made for 6 hours of my life in the last video? I'm not saying worst trade ever. I'm just saying. Anyways, that's that's irrelevant. You and I both know. I and you both, we both know. This is going to be confusing, isn't it? Anyways, we both know that we don't bitch about Destiny because it pays the bills. We bitch about it because we want the game to be good. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm making a Monster Hunter video. It's a massive looking open world game that you can go in and you can kill these giant monsters and you can loot them and you can get their parts and then you can make cool shit out of them and you can wear their like asses as hats or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm completely new to this franchise, but it looks fucking amazing. And the best part is no microtransactions in a game that is absolutely ripe for microtransactions. What what's not to be hyped about? Shh, little one, we must not get hyped. Hype is the mind killer. Hype is the little death that brings total obliteration. We must face the hype. We must permit it to pass over and through us. And then, when it has gone, we will turn the inner eye and see its path. Where the hype has gone, there will be nothing. And only we will remain. And what do we say to hype? Little one. Uh... Not today? Yes. Now run along. Hey Joker. Do you think people saw this throwaway plot coming back? Nah, my dude. We'll probably get called cringe in the comments and accused of padding out the length of the video for that sweet ad revenue. And then there'll be the people that are coming to see a Monster Hunter video. And they'll have no clue why a guy with the Destiny avatar is talking about Monster Hunter. Some might dig it, some probably won't, most probably won't, but eh, you know what, fuck it. Roll the footage. Yeah, so, um, this is kind of awkward. So the wonderful people at Capcom have decided that uh, I can't show the teaser for Monster Hunter Worlds 
in my video about Monster Hunter Worlds. So, yeah. There will be a link in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out. But, uh, without further ado, here's the rest of the video. What's going on, ladies and gents, boys and girls, hunters of all ages? The real Joker back again, once again. So, I'm not going to lie. I am a complete nutter Monster Hunter noob. Hell, much to my disgrace to admit, the game wasn't even anywhere on my radar for the longest time. That was until an interview with Trusted Review caught my eye. The series producer had this to say about microtransactions. This is a co-op game, and you're going out in up to four people parties. The idea is that there's a harmony in the four players going out, and you're going to get on well together. If you feel somebody hasn't earned what they've got, or they've got better weapons just because they paid for it, and you've worked for yours, that creates friction. Even in a co-op game, where it's not pay to win, because we're all on the same team, it's like you didn't earn that, or you've got it and you don't know how to use it. We don't want that for Monster Hunter. There are absolutely no plans. It's not in the game where you can get your random crates or random loot boxes and get great items or great weapons. None of the stuff like that affects the gameplay, is paid for. It's all cosmetic, just stuff that's a bit fun. I'm going to assume when he talks about stuff that's a bit fun, just because this interview is so weirdly worded, this is actually really hard to read through because the cadence and the way that it's um, written, I'm going to assume that he means in the Collector's Edition you get some cool samurai stuff. So I assume that there's going to be costumes that you can get. But it's all like character customization stuff and not actual like gameplay affecting stuff. And it's like you buy this, that, and the other and you get this, that, and the other. It's not you buy this random loot box and you get what's in the random loot box if that makes any sense to anybody who's still listening. Anyways, the interview goes on to say, We want to make sure that nobody is under the impression that, because it looks like the kind of game where you might have loot boxes, they definitely aren't in there. We want people to enjoy our great gameplay loop of achievement, satisfaction, where there are tough challenges, but... Learning how to play the game and getting better at it, you'll be able to overcome those challenges. The producer goes on to note that Monster Hunter relies on players learning how to beat monsters through intuition, rather than simply having the best equipment. Meaning, having paid for an item would break the balance of the mechanics. Even when you get to a certain wall, and you're like, okay, I'm 10 hours in. I suddenly have a monster I can't beat. It's not about, well, I'll just throw a bit of money at it and I'll get better gear to do it. What we want you to do is go back to your house and be like, well, I've been using the greatsword. Maybe I need to use the dual blades for this monster. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, it's January 20th. And I've played the beta a bit at this point, and I'm going to give my thoughts in a separate video, but what he's saying here is essentially what I've experienced. It's this really kind of interesting gameplay loop of, I want to use the insect glaive, and I want to master the insect glaive. It's like my favorite weapon in the game. I really love spears. If you've seen any of my concept art for Wishfire on Twitter, you know I love spears. So... Seeing that weapon and being able to play with that weapon and being able to master that weapon was really, really cool. It was a really fun experience. However, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily the best weapon for solo play. It's really powerful. It's got a lot of really cool mechanics behind it. It's a very technical weapon. But I don't know if it's the greatest for solo play. Again, I'm a noob. So, what I would say is, this is absolutely right, you'll get, you'll hit a wall, and you'll be 
10 hours in, you'll be fighting the same monster over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And you'll be like, why am I not beating this thing? I get so close, but then I always like time out or something like that. And of course that is because the beta only has 20 minute missions. If it was an hour mission like it is in the full game, I would probably be beating these monsters. But with it being a 20 minute mission, I'm like, oh no, I have all these problems and I can't win. And I'm like, ah. And uh, so it's like, well, you got to reevaluate what you're doing. Because if you're getting close with this one weapon that's maybe not the most effective, then what happens if you switch to something else? You may not want to switch to something else, but it's not about what necessarily you want to do. It's about what you have to do to do what you want to do, if that makes any sense. It's like, I need to kill this thing to get its parts to make this really cool weapon that I want. Well, I may have to change the way I'm playing right now, but in the future I'll be able to do this better because I have the parts from this monster. And uh, it's just, it's a really gratifying experience, especially coming from Destiny, Destiny 2, I should say, where everything's just kind of handed to you. Going out and farming, going out and looting, going out and really, really having to try to beat these bosses to get what you want, it's a really, really fun experience. Now, I'm not going to say that the beta is the best Monster Hunter experience because it just kind of throws you in there. If you're new to Monster Hunter and you played the beta and you don't like the game, I completely understand that. I had to go to the training room for like two hours, I'm not even joking, to figure out how to play the game because the beta doesn't explain it to you. Now, the main game will have this like story that runs through it, so I assume it'll acquaint you better with what you have and what you're getting and what you're hunting, but the beta is not necessarily the best representation of Monster Hunter. So if you played the beta and you're like, eh, I don't know about this, and you only played it for like 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, and you didn't really deep dive into it, because, well, it doesn't really explain what's going on to you, I don't blame you. But, uh, yeah, after putting in the time, after trying to figure things out, after going online and looking up guides and watching YouTube videos and all that nonsense, and figuring out exactly what's going on because the game, the beta, doesn't tell you, once you know what's going on, you're going to have a blast. And I hope, I pray, that the main game does this. Anyways, back to the article. The director continues. He says, We want you to go in and, through gameplay, find out what's causing you to hit this hurdle and figure it out. Whenever you get over that hurdle by yourself, it's such a great feeling. Why would we let you skip that just to make a bit of extra money? It doesn't make any sense. There's no way we would interrupt that flow. What is this? A AAA developer coming out with the nerve to say something like that? That's blasphemy! That's madness! Hey, it was heresy! And let's be honest, it's not just a bit of extra money that they're leaving on the table. Microtransaction loot boxes are clearly, gratuitously lucrative. If they weren't, we wouldn't have this controversy over loot boxes. Nobody would use them. So it's not just a bit of extra money that they are leaving on the table. It's a lot of extra money that they are leaving on the table. By going out and saying that they want you through gameplay and through experience, through exploring to figure out how to play the game and overcome the challenges yourself, instead of just paying a couple of extra bucks to bypass any challenges, they want you to actually play the game. That not only shows a respect for their vision, but for their player base. It's uncompromising. It shows integrity. And that's something that's so very refreshing. In a day and age when we have games like Destiny 2, and these games skim on the end game rewards so that they can shove them into loot boxes, or games like Blaze Blue, who's already announced that before the game even releases, 20 characters will be DLC fighters, meaning that 50% of its roster will be DLC. Or lest we forget, Star Wars Battlefront 2 tying in-game progression to loot boxes. Sure, they turned them off, seemingly at the behest of Disney, but with a plan to bring them back at a later date. 
and the progression in the game is still tied to these loot boxes. So in a day and age, when loot boxes are the norm, this is so refreshing. I love knowing that when I buy a game, I'm buying a full fucking game. And not only am I buying a full fucking game when I buy Monster Hunter Worlds, if that wasn't enough to get you interested in Monster Hunter, not only will the game not have loot boxes, but the developer announced at Gamescom in an interview with Polygon that Monster Hunter World, like its iterations before, will continue to have free DLC. No, 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 none of that hype. Just because something sounds like a good deal on paper doesn't mean it will be a good game. It doesn't mean that it'll ship at 100%. It doesn't mean that it won't be buggy as fuck or have a weak story or any of that other nonsense that we have come to expect with games. All of that said, this was definitely more than enough to get Monster Hunter Worlds on my need to research more about this game list, which currently starts with Monster Hunter and goes around the block about twice. Yeah, it's a, it's a long list. Monster Hunter Worlds will ship with 14 weapon classes, which range from your standard sword and shield to really long cartoonish anime swords to some more inventive fantasy weapons like the gun lance. The combat is also, and I'm likely to get reamed for this wording in the comments below, but please forgive me. It seems very reminiscent of Dark Souls, but with grappling and aerobatics. So, nothing like Dark Souls, but everything like Dark Souls. But I think Dark Souls is a really universal point of reference. But that is just my assessment from having watched gameplay. I won't be able to get my hands on it until the upcoming third PlayStation beta, Friday, January 19th, and I'll go into more of my actual thoughts after I get my hands on the beta in the upcoming beta thoughts video. And I could not talk about Monster Hunter World without talking about why we are hunting monsters to begin with. I mean, looter games are kind of this ludicrously stupid type of game. I mean, think about it. There's no real story there's no real point in it, right? We're just going around killing things repetitively over and over and over and over just so that we can get better gear to go kill the same things over and over and over and over just so we can get even better gear to go kill the same things over and over and over and over again. It's this kind of absurd, simplistic, but gratifying gameplay loop. So the game is clearly built around hunting monsters. I mean, it's almost like it's in the title. And once you hunt these monsters, and you loot their bodies, and you get pieces of their bodies that have different rarities, though, uh, not quite sure why that is. I mean, if I kill the monster, and the monster's sitting right there, why can't I just harvest all the pieces? Why would one version of this monster have a legendary piece and another version of the monster not have the piece at all? But I digress. I mean, it is a looter and looters are kind of nonsensical by nature. So killing these monsters and gathering their parts and crafting new weapons and armor is the way that you further character progression. Now again, being a monster hunter noob, my hope is that Weapons and gear that I craft are representative of what I've crafted them from. And not like other games with crafting systems that say, Hey, go out and collect 3 dragon sphincters, 23 dragon left eyes, 5 great dragon horns, 37 incisors, 3 french hens, 2 turtle doves, and a bottle of whiskey. And then you take all these nonsensical ingredients and you melt them down and you throw them into a pot and then you stir and you stir and you stir and then poof, out pops a great sword. I mean, like, really? So I, I, I hope it's not anything like ridiculous like that. I really do hope it's indicative of what I've hunted and what I've quested for and it's like, uh, yeah, you know what? When somebody sees me, when they look at me, 
They know what I had to do for that gear. But moving forward, there is a type of alien majesty to the world of Monster Hunter Worlds. Many of the locations and creatures therein give off this stranger in a strange land feeling. Seeing this pink and bleached coral forest for the first time drew this sense of awe-inspiring wonder. There's strange plants, odd creatures, particulate in the air. This is the sort of alien majesty that games like Destiny, with its devoid of life boxed in circles, don't even come close to. There's a real magic here. And there's a care given to the various play spaces, to the various monsters, to everything that I've seen thus far that show a real artistry for the craft. It's all grabbing and engaging, and I can't wait to explore them further. Until I get my hands on the game, I can't say whether I recommend it or not. I wouldn't say if I recommended it or not until I've actually played it. Even given the high praise that I've just showered it in. Likely causing many of you to wonder what channel you're even on. However, Monster Hunter Worlds clearly deserves your consideration. Everything. From the game developer's attitude, to the customization, to the majesty of the worlds, to the awe of watching two or three big-ass dragons grapple with one another. It all deserves your consideration. But like always, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. And like always, stay frosty.